Missa Ultima Mie Sospiri, probably from the 1580s, by one of the greatest Renaissance composers of his day, Philip de Monte, certainly one of the best known, most successful, and most prolific composers of his era. He was born in Belgium, worked in Naples, during the chapel of Philip II in Spain, travelled to England, and socialised with William Byrd, and then spent 35 years as controlled by Stan at the Austrian Habsburg Accord. The singers were Jing Wenchento and also performed in 2004, just six voices were the top lines, so we count to tell And another Renaissance mass at around this time tomorrow night after the Halloween evening concert, one by our own John Taylor. BBC Radio 3, it's just gone 10 o'clock. Time now for Night Waves with Anne McElroy. Thanks, Andy. Hello. I don't know why, but the signal in Manchester's gone really bad. It used to be okay, but it's gone awful. Something happened to O2 in Manchester, I don't know what. the programme, we'll be hearing some night thoughts. Poetry of David Gascoigne, himself sat for Freud in the 1940s, and we'll also be debating Africa's economic future and looking at how past events continue to shape its present. But first, we're here at the National Portrait Gallery, and I'm with the art of the Anthony biographer William Fever to see the first posthumous exhibition of one of the most significant and divisive modern British artists. The signal's been terrible for the last, since the beginning of the year. Well, since before Christmas. I don't know what it is, but there's something wrong. It's got an extraordinary sweet depth and intensity because the National Portrait Gallery show space is sort of narrow, sort of like a long table block. And there are little rooms off each side of each few groups of paintings come off separately. And so in a way, it's as though people have been banged up inside these rooms. And it's very grand, which is very large, larger than normal in this sort of constricted setting. And it's extraordinary for sort of 70 years worth of work. From here, for example, Man of the Feather, which is the young Freud, bristly, aged about 20, wartime, standing in front of a great building with some sort of peculiar yellow shapes of the grey floor, which could be a floor, could be seen. And it's very, very ambiguous in that ambiguity. If you came to this then and knew Freud's later work, you wouldn't necessarily think, aha, he was an early Lucy Freud. Well, early Lucy Freud is not something that always loved, because they were so highly detailed and microscopically detailed, and the feather there with every sort of little bubble on it and every, every line showing. And you would get disappointed with later work, but of course what really... I mean, I used to get a decent signal in the arches as well. I didn't have any problem in the arches. <laughs> in a hurry, maniac. I'm doing 30, what's he doing? Did anybody manage to listen to the concert? Hi there, Brisbane. Hi, Andy. Hi, John. Hi, Donna. I'm surprised you could get the concert in Canada. I didn't think you could get BBC over there. Pretty sure you can't get the iPlayer over there. You can get the iPlayer, can you? Oh. get on the BBC site Andy, that's crazy. Be 
have a nice legal cyclist here with uh, no sign of any reflectors or anything. Oh, you see, he's got reflectors on his heels. I suppose they count. No light on the front. All dressed in black. Very clever. Oh, there's somebody at the crossing. Dressed in black again as well. You see the blue light on the Harper Baths Tower? And the McDonald's drive through. There's a Mini Clubman, or a Mini Cooper should I say. Oh, from Cone. I'm trying to read the chat and drive it at the same time, it's not a good idea. in front of me it'd be easy to it'd be easy to read it I suppose wouldn't it? But I suppose if I had an iPhone in front of me with a chat on it I'd be able to read it. here are crazily marked. Oh, he's turning right. Where the hell, where did that come from? I don't know where that came from.
30 so that sign shouldn't come up. seen the new photograph of that house yet by the way Andy somebody was telling me uh, in the concert that uh, certain councils have gone round send men round knocking down snowmen because they're dangerous health and safety re regulations Imagine a gang of council workmen going around knocking down snowmen. It's in the telegraph apparently. snowman there. to my car thermometer it's one degree outside but I'm not sure that I believe it it's been behaving a bit strangely today I'm inclined to think it's quite a bit warmer than that Oh, it says one degree, all right. Ok, I'm going to go and unlock the house. Oh yeah, cuts could be minus 30 again I imagine. Oh, minus 45. Brr. Mega brr. What you're seeing at the moment, it could be it could be the inside of the computer or what I don't know. I'm gonna take you inside with it still on. We're gonna to try to anyway. Take you upstairs and plug you into the mains upstairs.
50-50 chance of getting the wrong key and I've got it. Well, it hasn't, hasn't melted much of the snow outside, to say the least. Oh, you're still here. Foot on the ground, right, okay, well done Donna. We've got about three inches, or well two inches now I think. Somehow it all it shrunk rather drastically. This has been raining all day. Well trying to rain, it's not rained very hard. You're going to lose the signal for a minute or two, and then it should come back on again. As soon as I plug the network cable in, it'll start to re reconnect itself. It's going in now. I'm just popping you on top of my video recorder. It's pinging at me. Wanted to reconnect, I think. So the channel will probably go off in a moment and then reset. It should be telling me to reset, and I'm going to reset it anyway. I'm going to go into Connection Manager and do it.
I'm disconnecting you now. Should be should be back on again.